Uh, about last night, something, something really got into me and I decided to do a full-blown inventory of all of the skincare, body care, hair care, basically all of my beauty stash and I decided to do it on camera. friends, I'm Marie Meliora. Uh, I am uh, here to confess to you my sins. I'm actually a little bit in disbelief that I'm really gonna show you the footage from last night when I pulled all, all of the stuff. Every single little jar and bottle that I have. I went around the uh, my house and I gathered everything that was like in different kind of places. I pulled a few things from the purses and I still suspect I probably missed roughly, you know, five to 10 items. But this is probably the most thorough review of what an average, because I don't consider myself excessive, which, is, which should be shocking, but what an average woman of, you know, of my age has in her possession. I don't know, it's, um, it also doesn't help that I started watching Hoarders right after. And at this point, I, I'm like in, 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 in fear that after watching this video, like somebody will stage an intervention for me. This, just the imagery of seeing all of it pulled together and then going category by category and trying to make sense of why I, for example, have 23 body lotions um, is quite quite an unraveling mentally like ch challenging straining type of exercise nevertheless I'm gonna I'm just gonna start reveling because all I'm doing right now is trying to just postpone the moment of when I'll share with you and with the world the <laughs> The, the craziness that became my beauty stash uh, little cabinet. I am on a third year of low buy and this is, believe it or not, this is progress. So, you've been warned, you've been warned, please be kind, judge at your own free will. Just don't tell me what you think of it, okay? You ready? You ready? Okay, I'm removing the card. This is a, a table full of skincare and beauty products. So I brought to you here everything that I have. I'm, I think I'm gonna go basically category by category. We're gonna do a quick count. And I'm gonna show you sort of like the highlights and maybe like the strongest low lights, but I definitely need to sort it all out and uh, continue the good work of paring down that I've been, I, I find that I've been really successful at that so far, but um, let's, not, let's not jump ahead. I'm gonna show you category by category where I struggle and where it actually was really blissful and rather joyful and easy to, um, became a little bit more of an essentialist. Here's some uh, pigments for my hair that I've been trying. I have a full video on that, but I guess if you're curious, I can make an updated video to show you the other brands that I tried and how it's been going. I have a bunch of shower gels. So these were clearly the easiest to go through. And I'm kind of, I'm just keeping track. I think at, at some point my, I might get tired of and just like recycle all of this stuff. If I can master the, the patience and save up a year worth of beauty empties, I, I just want to see the volume of that, to be honest. And um, yeah, there's a bunch of stuff here. Clearly much less of skincare. This is like a Lancome Clean Cream Cleanser that I finally finished. This is a moisturizing cream by Polish Choice that I'm not really a big fan of, to be honest. And all kinds of things here. I do talk about them in my cosmetics diary uh, on my other channel, but if you're curious to, to hear more about my skincare routine or maybe have a dedicated video, we can talk about it later. So, so far, what is it? May, June, July, 
August for four months and I think this is a lot. This is like a really, really su successful uh, project so far and I, I just want to preface it that I'm not really pushing products out. I'm not trying to just lather them on with like with excessive volume or like pour them down the drain just to use something up for the sake of the kind of like the the thoughtful um, hedonism principles or like low buy or minimalism itself. Not only because I'm clearly not a minimalist, I just don't really aspire to like white walls, one chair, one naked bed and nothing. I, I do like, as I said, like I do like diversity. I am a hiddenness in my nature, but I don't want to be dragged down or frustrated by the things that I own. I don't, I don't want there to be clutter. I want there to be opulence and diversity. Anyway, so I think so far good progress with the empties. This, put this aside. This is everything that I gathered in the house. So all of this is currently in active rotation and I do think that this is a bit much. I also need to maybe, I'm, I, I don't know, I find that it's easier to kind of focus on fewer items and really use them a lot. Then you can get a very clear kind of understanding whether, for example, I like these 10% AHA peeling body cream, if it really does, rejuvenate the body skin if it really helps with all kinds of kind of aging skin you know around the thighs around the like the the stretching areas the aging areas if it really does a good job if if i use only that i think i will um gain much more clear insight and much sooner than by having how many creams do i have here body creams it's just like a ridiculous amount of them this is not even all there's like more there so i think even though like you you still use some of them but it's just it doesn't create a clear picture of what you like what you don't like and it doesn't really feel like you're making any progress which i think sub subjectively is important especially when you embark on the ambitious project of paring everything down as much as you can down to the essentials and needed diversity rather than cluttered diversity. Uh, these are also empties, but the ones that I haven't really uh, talked about yet in my cosmetic diary on my other channel. So here we have some color products and some, yeah, some like some other stuff. So I usually put all of them here, then I report kind of like do a monthly check-in, talk about how's it going, what I liked, what I didn't like about the empties, and I basically add them to the bigger pile. You won't believe, I just discovered a whole another pile under the sink that I forgot about. But this is mainly, as far as I can see, hair products. I am kind of going through a crazy phase when it comes to pigments for the hair, is probably you've noticed my hair is always a different color every other day and i think this is truly a mega trend right now at least in the states i don't know like if you if you live in uh, a different country or like if you're in the states in which state you are tell me if it's really becoming popular because i see it as a really major major trend meaning that not only teenagers but women and men of much more substantial age and a career path have been experimenting with their hairstyles and hair crazy hair colors so i'm actually really glad i never thought i would enjoy the crazy colored hair as much as i actually do more hair tints and more hair stuff so this is pretty much full to the brim with all kinds of hair care but mostly hair color and I do realize that even though I do have quite a variety, maybe, just maybe, I need to pare down my hair hair pigments as well because it seems like it's a, becoming a little bit excessive. It's a it's a little bit too too many for for realistic use, especially when we're talking about neon yellow versus you know something so pastel and so. so Kind of sublime so demure because there's no way after using a crazy bright orange i can quickly transition to something so subtle so i think i need to think about the strategy of 
uh, future color changes and again if you if you want to talk more about like the crazy hair colors and things of that nature uh, maybe maybe deserves um, it's its own little separate video where we can chat more in depth about that if you're if you're as crazy about this stuff as I am oh, I got one more okay all of this is also going to a sorting station uh, next we have all kinds of body products that are waiting for their turn to be used some of them I have started like this one that I got from uh, Cl Clarins I think there was a PR sample a sample it's like a full-size product they sent I think it was through Octoly maybe I don't remember it's really great oil they say that you can use it in the shower but to be honest I actually do prefer to use on my feet because my, my skin on my feet has been just doing something really weird. It's been cracking. It's like no, no creams, no body lotions could really do it justice and keep it moist and kind of like firm. And this thing does wonders, especially if I put it on my feet, I wrap it in some like simple cotton socks. The next morning I wake up with like baby skin on my feet and I love that for it. Uh, yeah, so okay, so this is sort of body products and two extra what is it deodorants oh this is like a painful point you might discuss or might not i don't know uh this is skincare extras not used yet well actually some of them are have been lightly used so i need probably to speed up my rotation and these are shower products yeah and so different soaps and choo -choo 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 -choo, all kinds of perfumed shower gels. When it comes to new stuff, I only added, if I'm not mistaken, no, I'm not mistaken. In the month of August, I only added two products to my inventory, and these are by Protocol. I, I kept the card because I keep forgetting. It's a as far as I know, a relatively new brand. They claim that they do a lot of kind of model chemistry. A lot like actually their claims are similar to what I hear from Paula's Choice in a, a Algenist. So that they do kind of sustainable, environmentally friendly, clean type of chemistry for aging skin. And I decided to accept a few samples from them. Uh, through Octoly as basically as a PR sample. The vitamin C serum, these are very hard to formulate right, so they would actually work. So we'll talk about it later. So I'm excited to try what they did with vitamin C because a lot of those serums are not, like, half not functional the moment they leave the factory. And the um, uh, nesinamide, nes Niacinamide, okay. Niacinamide, okay. I was like, am I going crazy? Um, hyaluronic acid uh, and moisture cream. So both of these products are claimed to be formulated for environmentally, environmentally stressed skin or aging skin, which is yes and yes in my case. I'm very excited to try them, but I also wanted to talk about the with these two kind of in the context of the other skincare that I have. And the last one is very carefully packed my travel bag with all the liquids in it. So here I put basically a bunch of smaller samples and kind of like de decanted, if you wish, uh, some skincare so I can take it with me. I'm planning to travel very soon. So I will include these in the count, but I just don't want to mess with the bag. like. I'm basically sit sitting on my luggage. It, it barely, <laughs> the bag barely closes, so I don't want to mess with this any more than I have to. But it will definitely uh, make its impact on the inventory counts. I want to get real with you about deodorants, to be honest. I watched a beautiful review by Jess Loves Reviews, who did a heroic human experiment on herself, trying all kinds of natural deodorants and suffering through the transitional period that a lot of people who've ever tried to go uh, get away from the antiperspirants, which is an example here. Um, I usually get the secret one, like if I'm if I'm into antiperspirants and I've been trying different deodorants and it's not been going well. If, if you ever tried a deodorant instead of antiperspirant, uh, you know what kind of personal and not so personal hell and embarrassment you have to go through. 
Anyway, I've uh, <laughs> I've been trying. I'm on a streak again of trying to actually alternate these two, and these two I have in my backup. Basically, I have a La Vanilla Sport Lux, which, to be completely honest, is no different than the other La Vanillas. I don't find it to be working any better or any lasting any longer than their usual products. And I don't know why I keep buying into the same marketing because I had a different variety of this probably twice <laughs> over like the last four years and it never works. I always end up throwing it away. Now I am like trying to force myself to only use natural or just generally deodorants, hoping that eventually the kind of the production cycle will adjust as it's supposed to, but can't, I mean, it's okay. It's just not, it's not nothing special. Same goes for Burberry Brit Rhythm. I mainly got it because I really wanted a perfumed deodorant and I couldn't find anything, <laughs> anything I wanted to try smell wise. And I decided that a good old kind of least like a zonic, um, typical kind of male cologne perfume should be a refreshing treat, I guess, when you're when you're battling uh, <laughs> the natural orders. Uh, it does smell like a very generic men's cologne, and this I think has a very mild kind of floral scent. I do kind of use them interchangeably, but man, neither lasts longer than a couple of hours. And in the Florida heat, forget about it. So I'm that close, I'm that close just like throwing all of these three away and just continuing with the, with the usual stuff. But you know, I've been trying, I've been trying. So basically clearly we have here four deodorants uh, and I think I have a small sample of a cream deodorant by Drunk Elephant somewhere else. So it's gonna count as five. Main skincare. I think this really deserves the most attention because I think it's the most kind of useful, of, might be useful for you. So the things that I do try to minimize and I'm kind of doing a shitty job at is masks. Honest to God, uh, this is what I have like a live by Algenist and I do have the one sheet mask some Korean stuff and I never can find time for them. They just never, it's, I've had it for probably almost eight months now and I, or maybe a year, and I barely ever use it. I just never have time anywhere in my day and my routine when, when doing a mask makes sense. Just, it's not my thing. I would rather, I guess, do some kind of serum or night cream, but, I'm trying to use it up and I think I have like a sheet mask somewhere, so we're gonna count it as two. Uh, when it comes to uh, tonics, we have three here. So I mostly use them to additionally clean up the skin after removing makeup or if I don't wanna wash it with a detergent in the morning and I kind of like just kind of like splash a little bit of micellar water or in this particular case uh, right now I'm using up intensive hydrating toner by Midi Heal, which is one of the iHerb uh, bestsellers and I absolutely love it. This is kind of like a gel tonic and gel toner and I absolutely love it. It really adds so much moisture and soothes the skin in such a miraculous way. Then afterward, it almost feels like serum and even like skin uh, skincare, like any kind of lotion doesn't even add much to it. It does, it clearly does, but it, this, this is my miracle product. I, at this point, I think I'll keep purchasing it because I haven't found anything even remotely as good as this. Uh, the Suki, another kind of iHerb favorite brand. Um, this is Australian natural brand. This is rose water. To be honest, I don't like the spray. It's a bit too coarse. It really has a strong smell of rose water and it's not really that different that a thousand other water kind of sprays. It doesn't really do much to be honest and as soon as the spray evaporates the skin remains just as dry if not more than before. So I'm kind of just using it like flavored water on, on my chest or my neck and I'm just waiting for it to be over and you know be done with it. 
this is a new stuff that I haven't even opened. This is a rose, uh, water rose micellar cleansing water by Garnier. I heard really good things about it and it's cheaper than Bioderma. We'll see how it works. But to be honest, it, it has to do something amazing for me to replace it, replace the MediHeal with it. Right now, this is like my number one when it comes not only to cleansing the skin, but simultaneously cleansing, soothing, hydrating, and prepping the skin for the, like for the serums and the extra stuff. So this is like a real, real favorite. This, we'll see. Let's talk about serums. I do have three here, actually four, right? Four. So these are what I would consider day serums, things that I would use right after cleansing my skin in the morning. And three out of the four are vitamin C ones. I do really enjoy um, incorporating vitamin C into my routine. And I do hope that this one by protocol will do a good job. I just used up Claire's, which is a Korean version. It was a really interesting kind of uh, transparent gel that heated up when you started massaging it into your skin. It's a really weird, a little bit oily experience. I use it fully up. I'm not sure if I'll buy it again. It's just in terms of the tactile experience, it was really weird. And to be honest, I didn't really notice much of a change when I when I swapped it with the next one, which I also got from iHerb, also one of the like top sellers. If you sort all the vitamin C serums on iHerb, I think this is the best seller. This is Azelic, I think, age-defining vitamin C. It's a dropper and this is kind of like a micellar um, suspension. This is kind of like a since as many of you know vitamin C is hydrophobic so it has to be mixed in some form of oil or um, surfactants to like if you want to have a suspension of it in watery type of serum lotiony kind of solution so that still has to be some uh, oily type of molecules in it otherwise vitamin C just will not it will not be spreadable on the skin. Also, vitamin C very quickly can be uh, destroyed by interaction with sun and all kinds of rays. So you have to, it's, it's a bit of a high maintenance type of ingredient, but a lot of people who know better than me about skincare claim that the vitamin C absolutely have to, has to enter uh, our skincare regimen, especially after a certain age. So uh, I really like this one in terms of the tactile feelings and I don't really, to be honest, I, with skincare, I rarely can really tell a big difference. I can tell if something is awful, but it's rather hard to distinguish when something is really, really good. So like it, whether this is like one of them is much better than the other, only by the immediate tactile feel rather than by the effect. And the, this one is gonna be the new one. I'm, I have high hopes, very high expectations for the protocol one, we'll see how it works. Um, if you're curious, please let me know in the comments below and we will maybe do like an additional check-in. And this is my absolute hate. This is also an iHerb bestseller, Now Solutions, Hyaluronic Acid Firming Serum. I've tried to use hyaluronic acid serums in all kinds of environments, in California and in humidity of the South, now in Florida, and it just never, never ever works. It always dries out my skin. I don't understand, if this doesn't bring moisture in 88% humidity type of climate, then I don't know when it will. It always takes the moisture out of my skin and delivers it to the outer environment, I presume, they just the thin air. Uh, again, some of you who probably are curious about the ingredients have heard that hyaluronic acid is kind of like a water transporter. It, it, it sits as a, as a film between two surfaces, in this case, your skin and the air that surrounds you, or maybe like something else that's around, uh, like maybe a thick layer of cream and it takes water molecules from a more water-rich medium and transports it to the other side, which has less water. So 
theoretically you put it on a clean skin then you kind of seal it with a super moisturous rich cream and then it kind of keeps the water coming to your skin again not a good idea to wear hyaluronic acid in really cold weather or in very dry climates but to be honest if it doesn't work in Florida I don't think it will work anywhere so I'm kind of trying to use it up with this kind of sealing mechanism so I put a put it on the clean skin I put a really thick layer of moisturizing cream and hope for the best and it never is it never is a satisfying experience oh, this I'm so proud to report guys I only have one eye cream believe it or not I finally pared all of them down and eye creams for me last forever absolutely forever so I am beyond thrilled that I only have one at a time and I intend to keep it so and only buy the second one when I'm that close to be completely completely down when I'm scraping down the barrel so this one that I have is genius biogenist I used to have a another favorite which is their like older classic eye cream I still like that one I like this one I think they make decent eye creams. I consider, will consider repurchasing it again. Now we're talking about day creams. So something to seal kind of the serums with. First, I got sucked into the hype about Marula oil and I got myself a stick. The, com the company is called Marula. Yep, Marula Pure Beauty Oil. And I'm almost down. Wow, there's probably like one fourth of it left still. And this is just kind of like a dry, dense stick. I tried to use it in, when I was in Denver, which was eons, years ago at this point, it feels, since the quarantine started. And in the dry climates, it didn't really help me much with moisture. It doesn't really do anything extra that I would consider worth note or repurchasing again so with marula oil maybe it's just not the right formulation i don't know it was just nothing special and i find that a lot of moisture sticks really don't do anything with moisture these are the three day creams that i have right now this i'm going to be sorry uh, here we go this one i'm going to be using up and continuing to this one and this is basically by Algenist is my like catch all like a backup cream when nothing works and I have a bad a skin day then I use this one. So the MediHeal one is surprisingly affordable. It's a very um, I already decanted it for travel so it's almost done. It's a very fluffy kind of souffle type of texture. I do enjoy it as a day cream. It's beautiful. It's light. It has all the right ingredients. I I am considering repurchasing it again. The backup that I have for all kinds of tragedies is Algenis Renewal Anti-Aging Ultra Rich Cream. To be honest, I don't think it really has much of kind of active anti-aging ingredients, but it's almost like putting um, something between gelée and she butter on your skin so it, it's a perfect neutralizer. It kind of just one of those, yeah, like for me, it's a fallback option. I can't say that it does miracles. I'm not planning to repurchase it, but while I have it, I'll continue to use it until it's completely gone. So, I'm a, and this is basically my third option right now, which is the protocol. Gosh, it's white on white. Uh, niacinamide and hyaluronic acid oh I don't like hyaluronic acid never works for me we'll see maybe they did a miracle and actually formulated it correctly uh, moisturizing cream for daily molecular hydration and nourishment we'll see we'll see I'm very excited so I think I'm doing a good job when it comes to you know like the the core of the skincare um, still three creams is a bit much I think it's a bit much for for them to all stay good and like in good acting active state simultaneously probably two would be ideal for me uh, my face SPFs 
I don't know what to say. This definitely works, this Aveeno SPF 50, but this is like a greasy white paste that we all hate. And this one, extremely expensive by Erin's Faces, is a beautiful light gel with SPF 30 that doesn't really work. It's, it's a lot to be said about how to formulate physical SPF in different lotions that we're learning now. Uh, just adding a, like a number SPF and just saying that it has physical sunscreen doesn't actually guarantee a proper protection. Against sun rays, I think the there were like a few recent articles about that. If you're curious, read up about this. But I'm um, definitely not for the price and not for, um, for for me noticing hyperpigmentation and the lack of proper sun care. Uh, I'm not going to be repurchasing this one, even though it has beautiful light texture, and I think this is why a lot of people recommend it. If you just trust the kind of the label face value, it seems like it's a no-brainer even for that price because you know the textures are just so drastically different. This is like the old school sunscreen that looks like white paste, and nobody wants that to also put makeup over. And this is just so light and almost, not almost, it's actually quite modifying, mattifying, but it does not protect your skin against the sun the way that this does. In terms of chemical peels,